guys, welcome back. I actually just finished filming my last video, my seventh and eighth grade curriculum wrap up and took a little bit of a break, ran upstairs, made some pancakes real quick for lunch for the kids because why not, it's summer. And now I am back at it down here in our homeschool room. I am slowly but surely working through curriculum that I have stored in these cabinets. I am going through and getting rid of things that we finished this last school year making room for new things that we plan to start at the end of the summer going into the fall. We just recently had our homeschool assessments done and so that is our end of the year, official end of our homeschool year and so I, I'm ready, summer is here, I'm excited to start moving forward. So I thought this was a really great opportunity to kind of take you guys along with me and do a quick curriculum wrap up video. So now I'm going to move on to Mariah, my last year second grader talk through what worked, what didn't, what we loved, what maybe we hated, and everything else in between. If you have been following along on our channel this year, you know that our homeschool year did not go as planned. We had a lot of bumps in the road. Most of the things that I had planned for our school year, we had to ditch. And so we kind of just pieced it together and, and made things work. That being said, Mariah, who just turned nine, she just had her birthday, um, she just completed all of her second grade work. And she had a really, really good year. Her older sister, Leah, who is in seventh going into eighth grade, she actually really helped me a lot and helped to tutor Mariah for the beginning of the year uh, when I wasn't able to be as active in our homeschool day in and day out. And so, with Leah's help, Mariah has made progress in math, in reading, in, in all of her subjects. But that being said, there, there was some curriculum we didn't love. And so I'm just going to go through subject by subject. I'm just going to take you right down on the floor into all of my cabinets with me. All right, so let's start with math. This is typically one of the first subjects that my kids tackle every single morning. They actually always get math done before breakfast. But Mariah finished up in Matthew C. She finished the second half of Alpha and she went ahead and started into Beta and she's just a little bit more than halfway through this level in math. She is doing really well. Now Matthew C. is a mastery based math program and so I really had to slow her down a little bit as we are working through these levels because if you don't understand the concepts, if you do not know those math facts like the back of your hand instantaneously, you should not move on. And so I had to take some time and do some math games, some flashcards, just some other supplementary things to go along with Matthew C to really help Mariah master those math facts. And so now that we have done that, she is flying through beta. She will hopefully get it done this summer and we will be ready to start gamma in the fall. Now, you guys know we love Matthew C. It is the only math curriculum that we have ever used. I, I just absolutely adore Steve Demi. And so this curriculum definitely has been working. It is a keeper. We will keep plugging away with Matthew C. Okay, next I'm gonna go ahead and open up my language cabinets. Next door here is also my reading area, so I'm gonna open those as well. Uh, let's start with handwriting. Mariah worked through Handwriting Without Tears, their second grade program, Printing Power. Handwriting Without Tears is by far my favorite handwriting program, especially when you are teaching correct letter formation making sure that they are making those letters the same way every time efficiently with as few strokes as possible. And so I actually purchased two of these workbooks. Uh, we did one first semester, one second semester, just the same exact workbook each time. And it went really, really well. I would say that Mariah definitely has mastered all of her lowercase letters. She had her uppercase letters pretty well done last school year. Uh, so she's doing so well in handwriting without tears. We also added on keyboarding without tears to go along with this, which is a typing program. Uh, she is loving that flying through it. Next, let's talk about Happy Cheetah Reading. This is an all-in-one language arts curriculum that Mariah used all year long. Uh, she went through their first grade program, which is the level two cub walking workbook and level three cub running workbook. 
Uh, there were several readers that went along with this, uh, readers four through readers nine. We adore Happy Cheetah. It might be something new. You may have never heard of it. It's only been on the market for a few years. It is great if you have a remedial reader or a struggling reader or maybe a reader that you might consider a little behind. This is an absolutely fantastic program. If none of the other reading programs out there have worked, I would definitely tell you to try Happy Cheetah. Now, that being said, Mariah really just kind of took off. I feel like sometimes when kids are reading just developmentally, it just suddenly clicks. And so by halfway through the year, we were doubling up on her lessons every day. And so she really got through these workbooks really fast. And I already have the next level Happy Cheetah uh, book four already in the mail. I have a box with it there. I'm gonna let her maybe do an unboxing next week with that. Uh, but we love Happy Cheetah, it's working. So we're gonna continue on with this program. Now, I did add on some readers to pair along with her reading from Happy Cheetah. I wanted to highlight just a few of our favorites. Okay, sorry, I didn't have all of them over here. All right, now, big stack of them here to show you. First of all, I've mentioned these on our channel here before, but the Sing Spell Read and Write readers, I had these from when I taught Noah and Leah to read several years ago, but these are some of the best phonics readers I think that are out there. Sadly, they are now out of print, but if you can find these secondhand, they're, they're fabulous. Mariah also really enjoyed going through some of these pathway readers. Days go by and more days go by. We have, we have a several of the other titles to go along with this set as well. Uh, but these are really great if you're just trying to build some confidence with your child with reading. Uh, she read through the entire Little Bear series. Uh, these, these are just the sweetest stories. They give me memories of my grandparents. In the spring, every single day, she read one of the beginner books. These ones with the I Can Read It All By Myself with Dr. Seuss up in the corner. So Put Me in the Zoo or Go Dog Go, these kind of readers. They were very simple and easy reads for her. But again, I loved all of these for building confidence. The last vein of language I want to talk about is spelling you see. This was not necessary. Happy Cheetah is a full language arts curriculum. I, I did not need to add on spelling or handwriting for that matter for her. But Mariah loves school. She loves doing curriculum that her older siblings are doing. So I did go ahead and let her do some of Jack and Jill level B alongside of her older siblings as they were doing spelling you see. This was really great just for some nursery rhyme introduction, copy work, chunking. Uh, we, we just love spelling you see. Again, we will continue to work our way through. She will be moving into Wild Tales next year. I move into other subjects I do just want to put a little note here when my kids are second grade and under I really focus on math reading and writing and very few other subjects I feel like a lot of that other content is just covered organically we read a ton of books Mariah is able to pick up on a lot of what her siblings are studying who are older than her uh, so I, I don't overly concern myself with a lot of formality with science and history and geography, other subjects like that. I really just focus the bulk of our time on language arts and math. And then once my child is reading and writing confidently, then we can jump into those other subjects and, and really hone in on those a little bit more. So let me just put that note in here in, in case you're wondering why my you know, science and history seems a little bit sparse. That is why. All right, we're back here in my little science and history corner. I'm actually getting ready to start building a nature center up here. I'm so excited about, but let's talk about nature study real fast. Last year I had purchased Exploring Nature with Children. I was so, so excited to dive deep into this curriculum with Mariah and with most of the kids actually, but Sadly, this was something that got shelved this year. It, it took a little bit too much teacher involvement that I just was not able to fit into our schedule this year. And so 
I just, I had to put it down and say, we'll try it again next year. And, and sometimes that happens, it's okay. My kids still did a ton of nature study. They took nature walks almost every single day. Uh, we, we have trails around our house that they can go walk and a creek to explore, all, all kinds of really fun things. So even though they were not physically nature journaling every single day or even every week for that matter, they were in nature a ton studying it, uh, looking at different backyard birds, finding different leaves on trees and bushes outside. I mean, they, they had a lot of nature study this year, even though it wasn't something formal that I have something to show for it. And sometimes that happens and that, that's okay. All right, and then along that same vein of science and then moving into history, gather round. This is my catch-all subject where I really wanted to use this as a core of Mariah's school year to really, you know, encompass all of the school subjects. Sadly, our school year went off the rails and we did not cover nearly the amount of gather round units that I had intended to do for our school year. We just finished up the inventions and idea unit study. This was fabulous. Mariah really, really loved this. Um, she loved learning about different inventions. Because of this unit, we actually went on a really long rabbit trail about the Titanic. Uh, we, we got really deep into that and it was so, so fun. She learned so, so much. And so even though Gather Round wasn't exactly what I thought it was going to be, it was a lot more simplified, a lot fewer units this year. What we did do was very rich and very, very wonderful for Mariah. And I would say that's one of my biggest takeaways about Gather Round this year is that it is just so flexible. You can make it work for your family. Whether you do one unit, whether do you do eight units, whether it is a supplement or whether it is your core, you can beef it up or simplify it and really make Gather Round work for your family for the season of life that you're in. And so we, we just love Gather Round. I'm really going to do a little bit more of it with her next year, or at least that's the plan for now. Uh, but we loved the inventions unit. We also really enjoyed the Christmas Around the World mini unit. All right, so while we're down here in the schoolroom, I did want to show you guys these. These are the new stools that finally came in for Around Our Homeschool Bar. They are just black and white cushion chairs that the kids can sit and do school in, or I can sit and have coffee in. Uh, they took forever, <laughs> months upon months to get here, but now they're here. I just love them. They're actually uh, covered in a vinyl, so they're easy to wipe off. Like if the kids get markers or paint or anything, I can just wipe it right off. But thought I would share these with you guys. I'm so excited that they're here. All right, and then moving on to Bible, I'm actually gonna have to pick you guys up and take you across the room because I don't store my Bibles in that section of our homeschool room. I store them over here in the bookshelf. All right, so for Bible, Mariah read through the beginner's Bible. This is what my kids call the googly eyes Bible because as you can see, most of the people on the cover have googly eyes. Uh, she read through this book on her own independently. She has just a few more pages, not, not a whole lot left. She'll definitely finish this this summer. This is the perfect Bible for a child to read independently. I would say second or third grade level just those beginner reading skills are all that are really required. So this was really fun, a great way to start introducing her to studying the Bible on her own independently. Now, in addition to this, we also did family devotionals and, and other things, but this was the Bible that Mariah used on her own. And I always feel the need to preface that I do not consider Bible part of our homeschool curriculum, but I do like to include it in videos like this. Bible is something that we would do in our day-to-day -day life. It's part of our family culture, whether we homeschooled or not, but I do like to include resources on these videos for you guys just because I think they're helpful. <laughs> I got a little bit distracted. There's a hummingbird outside the window. How cool. Uh, it's hanging out by my lavender plant. But anyways, be sure to come back next week. I'm going to be doing that unboxing of Happy Cheetah with Mariah that I think you'll definitely be interested. 
as you can see, our weekday mornings are very full of swim. And I have this brand new box of Happy Cheetah. Habit that we have really honed since we moved into this house. A little bit of quiet after I have been on demand all morning long. 